Animal rights activists rejoiced when SeaWorld finally announced they would end their breeding of killer whales in captivity. And also to bring awareness to marines that are kept in captivity is Felipe and Ashlyn Cousteau, with, along with their website, TakePart.com. And they both join me right now. Greetings from Las Vegas. Hey, hey Jeff. Jeff. Felipe, I have to say right away that your father, Felipe, and your grandfather, Jacques Cousteau, you know, I'm a Generation X guy, so I watched the undersea world of Jacques Cousteau. It, my brother was divers, my whole family were divers, so I really think that I can trace back where my awareness for the environment and for my love of animals came from. It was from Jacques and Felipe Cousteau. Well, they were, they were great shows. You know, my grandfather, Jacques Cousteau, my father, Philippe, also, as you pointed out, you know, was in so many of those documentaries. They were a huge influence on my life, too, and, and they were, you know, really the, 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 the drivers. Uh, my grandfather, you know, Ted Turner called my grandfather the, the, the father of the environmental movement, and uh, so they, they had a big influence on us all. So I never thought it would happen in my lifetime, but SeaWorld announced it would stop breeding orcas in captivity. But you say they need to retire killer whales. How do you retire an orca? Well, orcas are, uh, uh, you know, an, an animal that uh, travels hundreds of miles in a day in the wild to seize with sound and uh, have these incredibly complex social structures. So, you know, taking them and putting them into a tank where they swim three times their body length and their world ends where there's banging and people screaming and cheering all day uh, is in order to enrich our lives to destroy their lives is, is, is wrong. And so one of the, 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 the ideas that exists is that these animals, at the very least, if they cannot be released back into the wild, many of them have spent decades in captivity and don't know how to hunt in the wild, wouldn't maybe survive, is to actually put them in sea pens, where at the very least they have more space, they can feel the tides, they can have access to, to try and learn how to, to capture wild food again. And, and at the very least, it's, it's the best of a bad situation that we can provide these animals who have given us uh, so much of their lives unwillingly that we can, uh, that we can return them back to a semblance of, of the, the rhythm of nature. In March, SeaWorld announced an end to its killer whale breeding program. No longer will future SeaWorld orcas be born into lives of captivity, forced to do tricks for millions of tourists. That's good news for orcas that have yet to be born. But what about the 29 orcas, one of them pregnant, many of which have decades left in their lives and remain trapped in SeaWorld's tanks? They can't simply be released into the wild because captivity has left them without the knowledge and skills to hunt for food and otherwise survive in the open ocean. A number of orca scientists argue that the best solution for SeaWorld's orcas is to put them in sea pens. Imagine an island like this. For comparison, here's the size of SeaWorld's largest tank. In this bay, there might be an animal husbandry pen for veterinary care. Within it, a medical pen to treat ailing animals. Beyond the husbandry pen, in a larger bay, would live orcas who have been newly released from marine parks like SeaWorld. Here, within the perimeter of a submerged, netted fence secured to the bottom of the ocean by massive buried anchors, the orcas can begin to acclimate to a much larger world. A gate connecting one bay to a larger adjacent bay could open after a bit of time when an orca who has lived her life in captivity is ready to expand her habitat. In this larger habitat, orcas could live who are ready to start learning how to catch their own food. The cost of building and maintaining the pens, which could cost tens of millions of dollars, could be offset by turning the island into a public education facility managed by a nonprofit organization rather than an entertainment company like SeaWorld. And rather than watching captive orcas do unnatural tricks, the public could see them in something approaching a natural habitat, learning to be free again. The observation centers would be powered by sun and wind, this is just one of many designs for sea pens proposed by orca experts. It's not freedom, not quite, but advocates say it's a huge step in that direction for orcas who have lived most or all of their lives in a prison. And it would provide an exponentially larger habitat than SeaWorld is providing them. Now, Ashlyn, SeaWorld says it's working with the Humane Society for monitoring and for complying with all of their captivity guidelines. Is that enough? I mean, I think they should be reaching out uh, to everyone that they can. I think that um, it's really important to try to get, you know, experts' opinion from from all different walks of, walks of life, be it the you know Humane Society or the ASPCA or um, any any number of animal mm -hmm. welfare companies. But 
what I think is, is so important, what I want people to remember is if you do love orcas or dolphins or manatees, mm. you don't have to go to a marine park to see them. You can actually go and visit them in their natural world, in their real habitat, see them doing what they normally do in a day uh, and not performing. And for us, I think that's why it was so important for us to be a part of of this movement with captive is is to show people that there are alternatives rather than going and giving your money to a marine park where they're going to show you these animals just for pure entertainment you can go to other places and and see them the way they should be seen we went to seattle to see uh the killer whales the the wild pods of killer whales up there and it was just absolutely yeah, amazing it's, it's and incredible we got to see granny she's 105 the oldest killer whale ever on record and we got to see her swimming with her pod and it was absolutely incredible to think you know in captivity they maybe live 20 to 30 years that's it now documentaries like Blackfish have brought tremendous awareness to the, the plight of killer whales and marine animals in captivity, even the cove about the killing of dolphins. But you know, a lot of older people are kind of set in their ways. So I was going to ask you that do you think that the youth, the next generation, is that who you need to target to bring awareness to that to bring about change? Well, certainly the, the, the changes that have occurred, the, the acknowledgement by SeaWorld that they need to change their ways has really been driven by a younger audience here in the United States that, that recognizes that we can do better and we should do better. And uh, it's really exciting to see that, that upswell, that wave of support for treating these animals with dignity and respect that they deserve. Uh, driven by a younger audience, and that's why we partnered with TakePart.com on this whole captive campaign because it's spring, it's, it's summertime. Summer has just exploded. Families are looking for what they're going to do this summer with their with their kids, and here's an opportunity with the resources on captive uh, is really resources about how you can engage with these animals in a responsible way. Uh, approved tour operators, we take the guesswork out of it, and there's also a sweepstakes online, which is really really incredible. It's to go to the Sea of Cortez to win an entire week long trip to the Sea of Cortez with the highlight, the highlight being a trip to San Ignacio Bay on the Pacific coast of Mexico where the gray whales migrate down from the Arctic. I've done this trip and it is absolutely incredible, Jeff. You go out in these small little pangas and the gray whales choose because they're wild and it's an open area. They choose to come to you. Uh, and I've had them come and rest their head up against the side of these little boats where you can give them a big hug and a kiss and scratch their bellies, and they bring their babies, which have just been born, before they head up to the Arctic. And those are the kinds of experiences that you never, ever forget. And that's the kind of thing that we want families to start to engage in and recognize to support responsible tourists. So all of those resources, the sweepstakes, where you can go responsibly, videos, uh, infographics, all sorts of great stuff is on the site. So with the awareness of Blackfish and the Cove and even TakePart.com, the website you're involved with, there's still a lot of work to do. China is opening up marine parks and also in parts of Mexico. So it seems like we're going backwards. Jeff, you're so right. Right now, China has 50 marine parks either already built or that are being built right now and are getting ready to open soon. So they are just starting their, their marine mammal entertainment uh, period. You know, we did that starting in 1938. Uh, the first dolphin was caught uh, just for performances, and, and his name was Flippy. And we really hope that these other countries will learn from our mistakes, that they'll see that this is not the correct way to treat these highly intelligent and very large creatures, uh, that they need to stay in the wild, stay in large open spaces. Uh, so we're just hoping, like I said, that these countries will kind of learn from our mistakes. The United States is still a trendsetter globally. And mm -hmm. as we begin to, to, to recognize that this is not the way that we should do it, we certainly set the trend uh, globally uh, for captive marine mammals in, in these parks. We can set the trend that that's not the way. And, and as the rest of the world looks to the United States, looks to emulate us, uh, we need to be sending the right message. The best thing that we can do is vote with our wallets here in this country, not go to these places. Instead, support responsible, wild experiences and, um, and, and get outdoors this summer. That's the best message that we can send to other yeah. nations. So we're in the digital age and takepart.com backslash captive brings all kinds of awareness to the plight of marine animals around the world. And I just want to thank you both for joining me today. And I think you're doing a great job. Thanks so much for talking to me and come visit us in Las Vegas real soon. Definitely. Cool. Done and done. Definitely. <laughs>
Okay, make sure you check out takepart.com backslash captive for all the information that you can do your part to help marine animals around the world, especially killer whales. I mean, they're such incredible creatures. And for more reviews and interviews, just surf on over to my website at vegasfilmcritic.com. I'm Jeff Ricky Howard. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you next time.